The Benson sisters, Shauna and Julie, got their start writing comics on the impressive Batgirl and Birds of Prey Rebirth run from 2016 to 2018. Though it was by no means their first foray into writing, they'd done a number of network shows including The 100, which is an incredible show on CW. They were then given a shot, no pun intended, at Green Arrow with the 2018 series Citizen's Arrest which ran from issues 42 through 47, although issues 42 was really a setup for the rest of the series, although it's important, especially at the beginning. And this is volume 7 of Green Arrow. So Shauna and Julie took over the Green Arrow from Ben Percy, who had a really good run with the character. And I think what the Benson sisters did well was bring two of the elements that made Percy's run so good, and in fact make for a good Green Arrow story in general, the more grounded hero, and then family, and really a focus on how important family is to him, but they put their own spin on these elements of a good Green Arrow story. In fact, we open issue 43 with Green Arrow and Arsenal saving families from a building that is being demolished by a powerful developer, Jubal Slade, who blew it up despite knowing that there were still families inside. Then we cut to Ollie and Dinah's new house, where Dinah is doing renovations, Black Canary style. And this is one of the really nice touches that the Benson sisters bring to their Green Arrow storytelling. They don't just play lip service to family the way movies like the Fast and the Furious franchise do. Instead, they show us little vignettes of what life at home for two superheroes would be like. Dinah and Ollie meet Roy for lunch, which is where we're introduced to the villain of this story arc, the Citizen. The Citizen is a vigilante like the Green Arrow. The difference is he is not afraid to kill and in fact seems to revel in being able to kill his victims, assuming that is what his audience wants. And his first victim is Jubal Slade, the developer from the opening pages. And we've seen this trope with Green Arrow before. As recently as Percy's Emerald Outlaw in 2016, a vigilante, or in that case, a team of vigilante, who goes beyond what Green Arrow does, and Green Arrow has to fight an enemy that is like him, but takes violence to an next and unacceptable level, becomes not just judge and jury, but executioner. But what I think the Benson sisters do well is turn this trope on its head a bit and make this a reflection of society. The citizen streams his killings and all of the panels show hundreds of emojis from adoring fans of the citizens and they repeatedly vote for the death of victims. Particularly haunting, at least to me, are all of the LOL emojis while the victim is being killed. Yes, the citizen is the one doing the killing, but he is driven in part by the encouragement from all of us. I love this reflection of the society and the writing ring true, even more true when you think about how school shooters and white nationalists will often stream their killings, sharing it with the darker corners of the internet. Of course the citizen has to come for Oliver Queen, the city's biggest playboy. Ollie allows himself to get captured and Black Canary rescues him. The Green Arrow and Black Canary easily dispatch the citizen to more cheers and LOL LOL emojis from the streaming audience, which is where the Benson sisters tell an even deeper story. It's all content. Remember, this story was published in 2018. This seems like an obvious thing to say today, but in 2018, I think this was a relatively new idea that Benson sisters were playing with. It doesn't matter if it is the Citizen or Green Arrow. It doesn't matter who wins or loses. The people watching view it all as content, with no thought to the consequences of what they are watching. Green Arrow tries to encourage people to focus on the things like voting that can have a real impact, but I'm guessing it falls on deaf ears, though I'm sure it got lots of thumb up emojis. Finally, we have to talk about the death of Roy Harper. And warning, there are sensitive topics ahead. We're going to talk about suicide. This series crossed over with the events in Sanctuary where Roy Harper committed suicide. Issue 45, Draw and Release, 
which dealt with his funeral in the aftermath of his suicide, is the best issue, I think. The Benson sisters did an amazing job of telling the story in a way that felt true to Oliver, Roy, and Dinah. Oliver lashes out at the Justice League for making truly terrible decisions, but he also blames himself. He misses and loves Roy, and that love shows through in the pain that Oliver is going through after the loss. The retrospective of their relationship is beautifully done, as is the moment between Dinah and Ollie in the sunset. Even this ends with Oliver realizing he still has work to do, despite his pain. I wish the Benson sisters had been given more time on Green Arrow. I think they could have built upon this story and Oliver's grief with a continued focus on family and their unique insights into society, and it's a shame that their run was cut short.